This is some information on how to linearize a nonlinear equation. So in the case of a dynamic system, okay, let's say we have a dynamic system dx dt equals some function of x. Now if this function of x is nonlinear, uh, for the purposes of a lot of the analysis tools that we have, we need to get this into a linear form. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to use a Taylor series expansion. If you recall from Taylor series, we have f of x is approximately equal to f of x bar. I'm going to put x bar. This is the point at which we linearize. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to have d f dx, take the first derivative, plug in the value at uh, the point that we want to linearize at, and then have x minus x bar. Now if we want to have a if we want to have a quadratic approximation to this, we would just continue the Taylor series expansion. We're not going to do that in this case, um, but just to uh, just for the Taylor series expansion, we would continue uh, with higher order terms. Okay, and um, that would be one over n factorial, and then the nth derivative. We'd plug in the value and then continue on with the nth uh, power of that difference. Uh, from the steady state value. Okay, so, but we don't want to include higher order terms. We're just going to include the first two terms, which um, constitute a linear model. Okay, so um, what we'll do is we'll just plug in this approximation uh, to that f of x value, and that will become a linear differential equation. Okay, so um, to access a worksheet for this, uh, what we're going to do is come to the process control course. Um, this is at apmonitor.com, and if you select the process control course and then uh, go to the schedule, we're going to go down to, um, this is going to be the linearization lecture, which is lecture number 15. Okay, and uh, what we want to do for this one is just access this worksheet on linearization, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and work through a couple example problems just to show some of the linearization techniques um, for linearizing nonlinear functions. Okay, so I'm going to actually pull up a Word document of that. Um, just a little bit easier to write on the Word document than on a PDF. Okay, um, okay so what I'm going to do is go ahead and write the Taylor series expansion just for this function that you see. Um, over here on the, uh, uh, the this first one. This is just one variable, which is x, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and just write the Taylor series expansion um, and uh, then have our derivative value. Now we have gotta make sure we plug in that nominal value x bar and uh, also put x minus x bar. Okay, so that's gonna be our, our linear, um, this is gonna be our Taylor series expansion. Let me go ahead and just make this just a little bit thinner so we can see it. Okay, so what we want to do is first of all go ahead and evaluate this term. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and linearize about um, x bar equals 3. Okay, so if we plug that in, we have 3, 3 cubed, 5 times 3 squared plus 27. And if I just do the math on that, I come up with 153. Okay, now we want to take the first derivative of x with respect to, um, with respect of, of f with respect to x, and that is just going to be um, equal to 9x squared plus 10 times x. Now again, I'm going to go ahead and plug in this x uh, bar into that, and uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, evaluate that. And if I plug it in, 9 times 3 squared plus 10 times 3, then that is going to equal 111. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the final uh, linear expression. I'm going to go ahead and just plug in the two values that I just computed. Those are going to be constants. Okay, so that's going to be 153 plus 111 times x minus 3. Okay, so that is our, our final uh, linear expression. Okay, let's go down to one more, um, another example that's, that's not using a differential equation. We're going to go ahead and do a problem with two variables now. So this has x and y, and the nominal conditions for both of those are x equals 2 and y equals 2. So that's the point at which we're going to linearize about. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and write the Taylor series expansion. Now this is in the case of two variables. Uh, it's very similar to the case with one, uh, but we're just going to plug in the nominal values first. That's just f. Uh, go ahead and plug in the nominal values and then take our first derivative with respect to x. And then I'm going to plug in to that expression just my values of x bar and y bar. Okay, and then this is just going to be x minus x bar plus, and then I'm going to have df dy and plug in, again, I've got to plug in x equals x bar and y equals y bar. Okay, and then this is going to become a constant um, as well as uh, the other terms in our expression. They're just going to be constants. Um, and then I have y minus y bar. Okay, so let's go ahead and just evaluate this first term. And if I plug in all of the numbers, x is 2 and y is 2, into um, that function, then I'm going to come up with, um, let's see, 3 times 2 times 2, and then plus, um, and then I have 2 squared, and then minus 3 times 2 squared. Okay, so these two terms are going to cancel, and that is going to equal 4. Okay, now let's go ahead and just compute the partial derivatives of the function f with respect to x. Okay, so the first one, um, let's see, so with respect to x, it's just going to be 3y minus 6 times x. And then uh, with respect to y, okay, that's just going to be 3 times x plus 2 times y. Okay, so I just took the derivative of that function with respect to x and y. And now I'm going to go ahead and just plug in the values um, of 2 for each of those. Um, and so I have 6 minus 12 equals negative 6. And then I have 6 plus 4 equals uh, 10. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just write the final expression. Um, I'm going to come back up here. I'm just going to plug in uh, these three values right there. Okay, and if I come down, then I'll have 4 um, minus 6 times x minus 2 and plus 10 times y minus 2. Okay, so there's our final linear expression um, that we uh, just computed by taking the derivatives and plugging in the nominal values for the steady state conditions. Okay, so now we're going to go on down to a CSTR. Now this is a differential equation model. And what we want to do is write a species balance. Okay, so in, in uh, writing a species balance, I'm going to have accumulation. And then I'm going to have n, um, that will be n a in minus n a out, okay? And then plus a reaction term, a reaction rate of a times the volume. Okay, so here's accumulation, here's in, there's out, and there's a generation term. And uh, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and plug in, um, for example, here's a reaction term. And then I have QN and CAN coming in, and QCA and CB uh, going out. Okay, so well mix, uh, continuously stirred tank reactor. And what we want to do first of all is just go ahead and write this in terms of concentration. So NA is equal to the concentration of A times the volume. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in um, at these different points for NA. Okay, so this, this right term here, we're assuming that the volume is constant. Okay, so that just comes out of the differential after I plug in the CAV. The volume is just going to come out front and become uh, this term on the left. Okay, and then we have our inlet term, and that is just going to be a QN times CAN. And then our outlet term is just going to be Q times uh, CA. And now um, the, the other thing that we want to do is, is go ahead and do this reaction rate term on the right hand side. And uh, you know that, that's going to be part of our, that's going to introduce some of the nonlinearity. You can see a squared term there, you can see two variables multiplied by each other. So this is the nonlinear term that we're going to be um, trying to linearize. Okay, so we have K1 
times uh, CA squared plus K2 CACB and then we're going to multiply all of that by the volume. Okay, so um, let's just go ahead and assume that we have some of our values that are just going to be constant. We don't want to linearize about those. Uh, the ones that we do want to linearize about understand the um, how the three, these three variables affect um, the concentration of A. We're going to include CAN, CA, and CB. Okay, so let's just go ahead and write those. CAN, CA, and CB. Those are our variables for our problem, things that can change. Okay, and then uh, at steady state, what is the value of the left left hand side of this function? Well, that's going to be equal to zero, um, and that's significant because in our Taylor series expansion, if you remember, we had um, you know f of x equals f nominal values plus df dx x equals steady state values. Okay, so if our x bar is a steady state value, then this term is going to go to zero. Um, and so if we plug in our what are steady state values, and we're just going to pick these values to be steady state, we just say, hey, we're going to pick values that are steady state for this reactor, then we can always assume that that first term is just going to be zero. Okay, so that makes it convenient in the derivation. So let's go ahead and just write um, the uh, Taylor series expansion here. Okay, uh, again the bar just means it's the uh, the nominal value or in this case it's going to be a steady state value. Okay, and then I'm going to have plus and then df dca in and I'm going to have those evaluated. This derivative term is going to be evaluated at steady state. Okay, and then I have CA in minus CA in uh, bar. Okay, and then I do the same thing with my other terms as well. I'm going to write this just a little bit smaller because I'm running out of room on this side. Okay, so I have CA minus CA bar. You know, again, the bar is just that's a CA that's going to be the constant value steady state conditions and then CB evaluated steady state conditions C uh, B minus CB bar okay so I have um, my Taylor series expansion again this term is just going to go to zero and I need to evaluate um, these three terms now in order to be able to come up with a linearized version of my model okay so let's go ahead and compute what are the partial derivatives of that expression now, um, if we just come back up here, CAN, it's pretty easy because if I take the derivative of this, CAN is only found here, okay? And so CAN, uh, the derivative is just going to be QN, okay? And then uh, my next uh, derivative uh, is just with respect to CA. This one's just a little bit more complicated, so all my CA terms going to take the derivative with respect um, to CA. And don't forget the volume there. Um, that always catches me. And uh, here we go. There's the uh, there's a linearized version. And then if I do with respect to CB as well, then I'm just going to have K2 times uh, CA times V. Okay, so let's go ahead and just evaluate um, uh, this. We're going to plug in these these values, the steady state values. And so what I need to do is uh, QN is going to be constant anyway. And then I have minus Q, that's going to be constant as well. Minus 2K1, again a constant. CA is not a constant, so I just need to plug in the nominal value. And then plus K2 times CB, plug in the nominal value. And then times V. And then also for the last one, K2 times CA times V, plug in the nominal value. Okay, so these are going to become uh, constants. I'm just going to call that alpha 1, and then I'm going to call this alpha 2 and alpha 3. Those are just constants, numbers that are calculated by plugging in steady state conditions. Okay, so the final linear expression, we had 0 for that first term, and then alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. 
Okay, and then uh, coming down here, we, we're also going to introduce what are called deviation variables. Okay, so deviation variable, if we put a prime, then that just means um, it's x minus the nominal conditions. Okay, so this is called a deviation variable. And we're going to do that for all of these um, terms, just redefine them as what are called deviation variables with the prime. And then uh, we're going to have alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3 there. Okay, so um, okay, so what we want to do is go ahead and put it back into uh, what uh, somewhat standard form. I'm just going to move CA over to that side um, and redefine C1. I'll define uh, C1 as negative alpha 2. Okay, and then I'm going to have alpha 1 over um, negative alpha 2 and plus alpha 3 over negative alpha 2. Okay, so there's a final form. This is a fairly standard form. Um, and again, it's going to be a linear expression because I have no variables multiplied by each other. We just have constants out in front of any variable that's in our problem. And surprisingly enough, this is going to become our time constant for our uh, linear system as well. Okay, so that concludes um, this tutorial on linearization. Uh, we've gone through just a couple of examples. Um, but essentially what we're, we're trying to do is just take a differential equation that might be any form such as this. And then we're going to be linearizing uh, the right hand side.